This is episode 58 of the Marshall Street Podcast. You're listening to the Marshall Street Podcast, the home of music industry know-how that will give you the skills to take your career to the next level. Here are your hosts, Bennett Ferguson and Stu Watts. What's going on, everyone? We're back. Marshall Street Podcast. Banking them. This is the third that we've done today. Yep. Um, All for you. Um, This one is episode 58, and it is called The Patience Principle. And essentially today what we're going to be discussing is, you know, unpacking the idea of being patient around uh, in music and situations and um, environments and all that sort of thing and how that can lead to um, bigger gains in the long term over a short-term mindset. Um, but first of all, we are mentioning that we have free consultations available, 15-minute consultations over, over Zoom. Um, if you check out the Marshall Street page, AU Dollars page, You'll find links to it there. Yep, jump in our bio. Uh, So I'll be talking about planning your next release, mindset around working in the music industry as well as how to get into the industry. Stu's handling everything, recording, mixing, production. And Matthew Craig, founder of AU Dollars, is handling press releases, um, branding, everything that goes around, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) He's got a lot of knowledge, that guy. So. But I said um, all the links are in our uh, bio. Head to the Marshall Street, Stu Watts Audio, AU Dollars. Links in bio there and you can book a free 15-minute Zoom for us. As always, if you've liked the information that we are about to drop on you, make sure to share it with a friend. If someone is looking to get into the music industry, let them know about this podcast. There's heaps of great information and resources there. And you can now rate podcasts on Spotify. So give yep. us a rating. Give us a rating. That's right. And uh, that'll bump us up in the charts because that's what we care about. Oh, it's all we about don't care numbers. about anything else. It's all about stats, my friend. <laughs> Uh, now, patience. Patience. What, what a topic we have here, Stewie. It's huge. It's a big one. And, um, you know, I guess the, the thought came from always, always, well, not always, but regularly hearing um, these topics thrown around about Spotify not paying people enough money, you know, <laughs> bloody, you know, oh, I, I didn't get this many numbers. And it all, in my opinion, comes back to are you being patient about, your art because when it comes to those sorts of things, a lot of the time they can be important for various reasons but if it's all for clout and all for ego, that's a short-term mindset Mm. because you're expecting that a number is going to make a difference to whether you are successful or not or have a successful, happy lifestyle in the music industry. Yep. And, And even I guess to go one step further on that, with a short-term mindset, I guess the question is what happens if you achieve what you want in a short term? Like mm-hmm. let's just say you go and you make a million dollars your first year in mm. and you've got gold records on your walls. Like good point, yeah. what are you going to do for the rest of your life? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so if you're making music because you love music and you love playing in a band, then what's the end point? Yeah, you'll still keep you're, doing you're, that. You, well, hopefully, you if you're in it for the right reasons, you will. So then it comes down to, you know, why did you get into music? Mm. Um, you know, if did you got it in did you get into it in, for the wrong reasons? Did you get into it to impress friends, to get girls, to drive cars, because you thought it would make you cool? Mm. That's a if you get into any industry for that, you're I, always gonna be left somewhat unvalidated and unfulfilled. Yeah. Because you're you're chasing something that isn't there. And I, you know, f- this is stupid, but there's better ways to go about yeah. doing that. Don't you don't have to spend so much time learning about music and yeah. un- and like how to produce shit and yeah. making video clips and just for that reason, like that's hundred yeah, percent. That's not the main point, but it you know it comes along. But with people it, do but early on. People do, do get yeah. into it because they think that's cool. That's mm. why a lot of people start DJing, you know, and that's mm. why the difference between people who are there a year later and who are there ten years later. Mm. It's are you in it for the right reasons? Because you love this job, because you love music, because it's what's inside of you, and you can't stop that. Yeah. And if that's the case, then you know, fuck, you can get all the accolades and financial rewards at any point. And the idea is you're still going to be doing it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think like when you're in those environments or when you're in that flow state, if you want to call it that, where you're really loving what you're doing, you're loving producing or if you're a manager, you're loving getting into the nitty gritty of booking stuff for your, for yep. your band that you're working for. If you're loving that and really enjoying that, you're not thinking about those sorts of ego-driven um you know, stats, I guess, mm. uh, for lack of a better term, yep. you're not thinking about that as much. It's yep. not about that. It's about what is the goal here yeah. and following those goals and those little pathways yep. to try and make things better for yourself. Um, 
and just so you can get better at them. Yeah. You know, because you like the process. Because you like the process. Because you like what you do each day, and getting up isn't a chore. And because you you want to be better at a skill or at a craft, and you just genuinely enjoy yeah, what you're and, doing. And that enjoyment that you get, like me and Clacker talk about it all the time, is like how good is knowing how to do something. Like there's this sense of accomplishment and it just feels really great to be like, I want this outcome and I know how to get it. Mm. But that doesn't come immediately. It's a long process mm. to learn something. And, and these are little things all along the way. You know, if you're a mix engineer and you're first starting, unpacking a compressor and figuring out how to use that in the first year or two or three can be really challenging. But when that point that you've worked and, and understand compression and stuff like that, that few years of doing that, you're like, oh, sick. It work, I get it now. Yep, and 100%. That, that, that is a long-term thing. That You have Dude, to be patient. And, like, and it's funny. It's, I'm glad you brought up uh, the example of mixing and a mix engineer and a compressor. Like I, I think I was working on my mixing for, like honestly, probably – four years intently, mm -hmm. probably all up seven years. Mm -hmm. But there was probably four years when I was like, it was something that I was working on every day and I was going to school and I was learning about it. Mm -hmm. And I still never got to the point where I would know the end result I wanted mm -hmm. to do when mixing. Mm -hmm. I was still learning. I was still yeah. like, oh man, here's a sound. What can I do with this? What would mm -hmm. this plugin do with that? What happens if I swapped around the processing chain mm -hmm. in this? What happens mm -hmm. if I, like, I was still... I guess learning the waters yeah, of it. Yeah. Whereas when you watch someone like you or people yeah. like someone who's more advanced in their journey, yeah. they have an end goal. They're using the tools for a reason. And this can and be translated into so many different areas, all of the different areas of the music industry. It's but, like I mean, as a manager of an artist, you can mm, be flailing blindly and going, I guess I should book that gig for them yeah. or I guess I should get them in touch with that person yeah. without knowing the end result of what you actually want Correct. out of that meeting. Then and it I mean, can, that, it that can, can relate into anything. Then you end up taking, uh, you know, I guess any opportunity that comes to you rather mm -hmm. than thinking about it through the lens of, hold on, what's the long-term uh, effect this is having my artist brand? Mm -hmm. Is this where they should be in two mm -hmm. years? Because sometimes the best thing you can do is say no to opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, absolutely. managers early on, you don't know that. But, and you can take like year-long, two-year-long sidesteps yeah. of being like, ah, oh, I really went the wrong path for a yep. long time there. Which is completely fine. It's fine. Um, but I think coming back to mixing, like the point I wanted to make there was, man, there is, there's mix engineers, you know, that come through here that are like, oh, I've been doing it for three years and they think that they should be at a high level. Like, dude, I, I was honestly working at it for four years over mm. a seven-year period, like seven years. Part-time though, probably. Yep, yep. But there was, And there was four years, I'd say there was probably three years when it was full-time because right. I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. um, but over a seven-year period, and man, I still wasn't at a, I mm. still needed to to um, put it, to have patience about mm. if I was going to be a mix engineer, I mm -hmm. still wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so, there, you know, for people listening who think that they're four years in and you've put up, you've done the hard yards, it's like, mm. You just got to keep going because, yeah. and it's only I. It was really when being around you, uh, and then like Mikey Costa, some other engineers. But when you sit in the studio with someone on the next level to you, unless your ego is blindingly telling you you're on yeah. their level, man, it's a fucking. It is a. It is a like a hallowing. It's a fuck. It's a sobering experience. Yeah. When you're like, wow, these guys are on another level to me, man. Well, and I would challenge that, and I still think that I'm really early on in my journey. Oh, like so, definitely. So very but again, early if you go on. on to do everything you want to do, yeah, yeah, you are early on. Yeah. But you're also 10, 12 years deep into this. Yeah. Um, and there's people who have been doing it for half the time who mm. think that they're that they're at a, a level where they don't need a, um, yeah, put in yeah. to, to have patience anymore. Yep. Yeah. And the, the immediate kind of um, e example that comes to mind is, is obviously being an artist. Being, mm. being in a band, being a solo artist, whatever that might be, being the front person of a band or whatever, that immediate kind of expectation of I'm going to get something out of this as soon as I start yep. is higher than most areas in the music industry. And I would say that it's obviously the most amount of people that are in the music industry are in bands mm. and, and play music, um, I would argue that. And, and so there's that real kind of hurdle that you have to jump over mentally to be like, this is going to take a long time mm -hmm. and I have to be okay with it Yep. because the stuff that you learn along the way all adds up. 100%. Um, and, and 
by expecting that you're going to get something. Like we've all been there. We've all Like mm. everyone that's been in a band, I would say, expects to get like really good gigs in the first year or two. Yep. <laughs> and it doesn't feel like... In two years, you're and, like, I'm going to be playing stadiums. I'm going to be like Green Day. It's going to be huge. And maybe 1% of bands that exist. Oh, not, not even. No, no way. Not even. Like one one thousandth, yep. I would say, of yep. a band actually has that sort yep. of a success in, in the first year or two yep. or three. And again, it's like it's it's immaturity in the scene. It's like it's it's just it, – and I say immaturity not out of a negative way. It's just – Naivety. That you have, naivety, yeah. yes. Um, until you've gone through that process, then your brain – understands the bigger picture of the game you're mm. playing. Um, and, you know, even some of the the social media consulting that I do for corporates, um, one of the things when I'm working through with them and their social media uh, schedule in terms of what they're posting on which platform throughout the week, one of the big things that I'll tell them, it's like these people are usually going from posting nothing at all and having a real lack of understanding of how important social media is in a business sense to get new clients so what I teach them is cool. One, how important these platforms are, but also let's build out your weekly schedule. Mm. And the first thing is, hey man, when you're writing this out, if this overwhelms you to think you need to do this for the next two years, you've bitten off more than you can chew. Mm. So they go into it with that short-term mindset. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm going to build out this epic social media plan mm -hmm. and be going do, do, do this. And then they've, it, they've put so as much into it. As soon as they it, see it. That two weeks later, <laughs> they stop doing it because it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, you need to have – this is a long-term game. There's patience. Mm -hmm. If what you're looking at, if you don't think you can go and execute on that for the next two years, yeah. it's completely fine, back off. Back off. Um, because it, it's patience. It's a long-term game. Yep. And, you know, the – as long as you're doing something, you'll keep moving forward. Yep. I think that's important to mention as well because you there's different levels mm -hmm. and that's completely fine. If you hope to be the best of the best, you have to expect to do way more work than everyone else. 100%. The, the effort is unbelievable to be the best of the best. If you want a result and that 90 sorry to jump in. Yeah. If you want a result that 99% of other people don't get, you have to be willing to do the work that 99% yeah. of people aren't prepared to do. And like it's okay to not be at that level. 100%. You've got to be <laughs> honest with yourself and what makes you happy, what yeah. you, what's enjoyable. Like to you, if if spending time with your family yeah. and working, having a solid work week and then having time mm -hmm. before and after work to see your kids and you want to take your kid to the soccer game on the weekend mm -hmm. and then go to the movies on Sunday, yep. if that to you is a good quality of life, then it's like, yep. cool. All of a sudden you're not aiming to be making a million dollars a year. You're yeah. aiming for probably what, 70K, yep. 80K. You can live super comfortably. Yep. All of a sudden the goalposts change and you can now start to Im implement some strategies and structure to get there. To make sure that that is the life that you end up living and, and you're because happy. without that you end up either working too hard or too little Be Yep. because you don't have the awareness of what it takes to actually sit within that mm. area. Um, but with that, you know, if you have the expectation set correctly in the first place, it will be much easier to step over that hurdle of, okay, how much work do I actually need to do yep. and how long is it going to take? Yep. Because that thought of like this is going to take five minimum, 10, maybe 20 years is a really confronting one. But if you have the right expectations of I only need to kind of get in this ballpark, yep. you're more likely to, to set the right goals yep. and not be overwhelmed, yep. not be panicked. And stay with it. And stay with it. Absolutely. In fact, and I can... I can see this is funny, just popped in my head that about mindset. I remember when the first time I heard Hilltop Hoods' album, The Calling, in the intro track to that, their hook was like, um, Hood's been doing this for more than 10 years. Mm. And The Calling was their breakthrough album. That yeah. was what put them on the map. So yeah. they were doing this for 10 years before The Calling. When I heard that in my head, it was like, all right, well, you better get to work and rack up the first 10 years yeah. because you got to do them anyway. Yes. So to me, I was always, it was almost like, oh, man, how quick can I get the? Obviously, yeah. you can't speed up time, but no, in my head yeah. it was like I knew that this was going to be a 10-year journey. Yeah, yeah. In my head there was no there was no, no question, about no it. question yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. going to be doing this for less than 10 years. <laughs> yeah. And then all like that, it just – it makes one the, you know, I guess the failures or the downs um, a lot easier to cope with because you're looking at – it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, and I think the trap that a lot of people fall into is they start to – um, real early on, ignore the actual things that they are learning and the wins that they are getting because mm. they are seemingly insignificant in comparison to what they had that expectation of. Mm. And that's a real trap that you can fall into because you can kind of miss things yep. or you can have that lack of awareness of, oh, I actually learnt something by playing a gig to five people. Yep. 
You know, there, there's learning in all areas. And if you completely dismiss something because you're like, there should have been more people there. Yep. And you've you've completely ignored. Uh, did we even play well together? Yep. Was there a reason for people for more than five people to come and visit us? Yep. Uh, Should we gig? have done our promo better? Did we have posters before? Like all of the things. Yeah. It's 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 a it is a detrimental mindset to focus on the negatives and the things that you think didn't happen, mm -hmm. as opposed to looking back on the things that you actually have done and taking the positives away from that and growing to be better with that. And and it brings up another point. It's it's really important to evaluate what you've done along the journey, like keeping a journal or keeping 100%. track of all of the stuff that you're doing at the time. Yep. And, you know, I can honestly say in the bands that I've been in, the reason why we didn't progress further that, than we did is because we weren't keeping track of stuff. We didn't have regular band meetings. We didn't keep track of where we are and evaluate what we'd already done. Um, you know, there was those times where it's like, we know how to do this, so therefore we should you know, play a gig or we should record a video or there's there's the awareness of kind of the roundabout things that you need to do to, to get some success but there's a lack of strategy mm -hmm. and it kind of means that you aren't fully aware of all of the little things that you've learnt along the way mm -hmm. to actually use them and utilise those skills in a better way to be like, you did that whole um, organisation of the video clip you should do that again because you were really good at it. Or you tried that last time and you weren't so good. Yep. Maybe you should do something else this time. 100%. And I think the evaluation on failures is so much more important than evaluating your wins. Mm. Um, and there's – I'm going to uh, reference old David Goggins here. I just finished his audio book again. And there's a time when he was looking to break the world record for most pull-ups in 24 hours. Yep. Um, and the first time he did it, he talks about – he's like – he went in there complacent. He's yeah. like, I thought I was going to fucking smash yeah, it. Yeah. He goes, I'm David fucking Goggins, yeah. man. And there was uh, there was outsiders, there was TV yeah. crews in there, yeah. and he and he didn't didn't yeah. get anywhere near it. No, he got and, like thirty percent of the way or something. Like, and he, and then he goes the and then so he had to sit down and he did the evaluation of his failure. What what all, what were all the things that stopped him from doing that? He got complacent. There were, were distractions in there. He didn't know how what was going to happen with his hands when you try to do this much yeah. physical like all of these things. He had to go and break down so that he could get back and. Two Two months later, he attempted it again. Exactly yep. two months. Mm -hmm. He failed that time as well. Mm -hmm. And he had to go back and go, why, why did I fail at this? Yep. Someone who is so mentally tough and someone who drives himself so hard, why did this not go the way I thought? Mm -hmm. And you got to really dig deep and evaluate that so that when he came to the third time, exactly two months after his second attempt, he did and he cruised past it. Um, but it's And I think like if, if he had have had that short-term mindset of I didn't get it this time, therefore – like it's someone else's fault or, yep. you know, there was something that was out of my control and he didn't fully evaluate what happened and he probably would have quit. You know, there's like there's enough reason to anyone to to be like, I didn't make it this time, I'll oh, fuck yep. it, I'll give up. Yeah, I gave it a shot. Yeah. But no, you had, you had to go in and you evaluate your failures and, you know, that is the best thing that anyone could do. If, if and obviously in, in – uh, like a physical world and sports world and Guinness world record worlds, mm -hmm. there's a straight black and white in terms of success or failure. Music doesn't have that straight black and white. Mm. Everything is subjective. There is good and bad things to learn from everything you do. Mm -hmm. But if you as a band or as a collective look back on a tour or a release or anything that you've, you've uh, undertaken mm. and you will honestly go, hey, man, this didn't go the way we think. We thought this something, this didn't happen the way we thought it should have. Mm -hmm. You need to go back and evaluate it. Start mm -hmm. from fucking step one. Mm -hmm. Why did this not go? Did you did, did you get complacent? Did you was there things that you didn't look after because you thought they were going to happen themselves? Mm -hmm. Did you not? Was your promo not on? Was there some? Were you actually? Was there some sort of delusion in terms of the art? Uh, like all of these things, you need a you need to go back and question them so that you're better tomorrow, so that you're mm -hmm. better next release, so that you're better next project. But if you have a short-term mindset, those things are hard to do. Mm. You have to really have this idea and like know in your heart, hey, dude, this is a marathon, man. You need patience at it. Mm. Ask anyone who did anything big with their lives. Mm. It's a 10-year journey minimum. It's like most overnight success is 10 years in the making. Ask anyone who got super high in a corporate world, mm. anyone who grew to be the best at sports, any artist who grew to be the best and is headlining Coachella. Mm. It did not happen right. overnight. And I think like what... I think is important to mention as well, do not ignore these big lofty goals. That is where you should put them, but put them at like 25 years time. Mm. 
That way, if you go, okay, 25 years from now, I want to headline Coachella. Yep. Okay, let's take that back 10 years, 15 years. Yep. What should we have achieved in that 15 years so that in 25 years I can headline Coachella? Yep. Okay, let's take it back another five years, another yep. five years, another one year, another month. Yep. You know, that is where really ideally, you know, like great planning can really benefit you because you're not completely ignoring these lofty goals. In fact, you're being able to say, okay, this month I was able to get this much done. Is this the right trajectory to get me towards that 25-year goal? Mm -hmm. And that's something that you need to regularly evaluate. But again, patience is so important because if you feel like for whatever reason, oh, I probably should get Coachella headline in 15 years instead of 25, you know, you, you're really kind of challenging that and you're not, in the mm. right mindset yep. and you, you're trying to push it sooner and you're trying to achieve things that realistically you weren't going to achieve in that time. Yep. And it's, you know, it's like we say here, the difference between a plan and a dream is just having steps to get there. Mm. You can have the biggest, loftiest, most audacious dream in the world. Mm. At the end of the day, if you've broken down and you've got some sequential steps to get there, that's no longer a pipe dream, that's a plan. Mm. Um, and the other thing is just remember like any – Anything is possible. Like think of anyone who's done anything huge. Mm -hmm. They're all just humans at the end yeah, of the day. Absolutely. It's they're all just someone who just decided to work really, really hard <laughs> at something and not stop. Yep. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on in terms of, you know, I feel like money's quite a big factor when it comes to people potentially giving up or having that short-term mindset of expecting that you're gonna get this amount of money because of this job and therefore it tainting that mindset of the long term. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think there's two threads to pull out here. One of them is how much money do you need to live? You know, I guess a lot of people see things like entertainers and big artists and especially hip hop artists driving around in fancy cars and flexing with $10,000 chains and they think that they need that level of money to exist. When at the end of the day, you don't. A lot of these people want money to buy shit they don't need to impress people they don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's strip it back to, hey, dude, how much money do you actually need to live here? Mm -hmm. You know, is it, you know, what's your rent and your food and some a holiday? What, 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 what yeah. level do you need? Because um, that's your starting point. And then also, there's the a great way to kill a passion is to rush to financialize it early. Mm -hmm. You don't need to make that amount of money that you need to live off, off music. In mm -hmm. fact, you know, most people will tell you early on, it's very hard to generate um, consistent income mm. through music. Yep. Um, and that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be to build your brand, to build awareness, to use tools like Instagram, Spotify, to build your brand and around the band so that in 5, 10, 15 years, now suddenly you've got a consistent income that might come through syncs or from ads or from all these yep. other things, but you need to get there first. Yeah, absolutely. So then I'd be going, well, how do I take that financial pressure off myself early? Cool. What do I like doing? Am I a social person? Can I get a job at a bar? Can I find a job at a record store? Can I, you know, is it working in a call center? Am mm -hmm. I just, am I down to work in a call center three days a week mm -hmm. so that I can pay my bills so that I can be happy? And then all of a sudden I've got four days free to work on my music. Yeah. That's that's a great quality of life. In fact, working three days, working four days and making music three days is a great quality of life compared to someone who thinks that they're going to make music seven days but has no money and every month is a financial burden Struggle. to pay yeah. rent. That is that might, that is, is a crippling yeah. place to be. Absolutely. So taking that financial stress off yourself by working in somewhere outside music at the beginning mm -hmm. is, to be honest, the only way to do it. Unless yeah. you inherited money, unless yeah. you had a big bank account from And somewhere. I would even argue that like if you've inherited money and you're straight away like working as a producer in a, in you're a gonna studio. Burn, you're going to burn through that quickly. And you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you're, you're going <laughs> to like, burn No through. one's going to want to hire you if it sounds like shit. You're going to burn through that. It's got nothing to do with the money. Yeah. So it's the – like in terms of money, it's it's – Take that financial stress off yourself. Mm. Um, you know, work a part-time job, that one that doesn't drain your soul, one that yeah. when you finish at the end of the day, you don't want to fucking kill yourself. Yep. You want to get through work, use it to generate money to live yep. and then be in a good mental state so that when you get home, you're like, man, I'm going to make some tunes now. I'm going to totally. pick up the guitar, I'm going to write. And what I think like a point that you made that, that was really important to me starting working here was budgeting. And mm. like how few people in this in this world budget and actually understand where their money's going. You need to sit down and take the time to map out what are my bills every week, what's rent, how much is my phone costing me, internet. All of these little things that add up and add up and add up, 
you know, all of a sudden you need $700 to exist. Yep. Okay. How do I make $700? Is that a part-time job? Yep. Can I make that off music where I, where I am right now? Mm -hmm. If the answer is maybe half, half. Yep. So the budget of your finances is so important. And I feel like it's like just no, like hardly anyone actually it gives sits you clarity. there and does it. Like when you really know all those numbers, you have clarity. And if you're in a band, doing a budget for the band. Yeah. It's like if you want a tour, if you want to rake, make a, make a, record a single, how much does the recording studio cost? Yep. Add it up because not knowing that and just spending the money you'll realise, oh, I don't have enough money for this other thing. It's like, well, mm. if you had a budget in the first place, you could have saved up and waited an extra two or three months, been patient for six months yep. and saved that money up first and then you could have gone in and executed on all the things that you wanted to yep. instead of just saying, I've got enough money for this recording studio time yep. right now, so let's do it right now. Do you know what happens then? is you record the song and then you sit on it for a year or two mm -hmm. and don't release it because you don't have enough money to, to do a, a full strategy mm -hmm. or you end up releasing it half-heartedly yep. and it doesn't get results and yep. you wonder why. Mm -hmm. um, and that, all of that is just like starting at the start is budgeting and planning. Yep. Like it, it, it's, it's really, it's clarity. You, you mm. understand it all and you make better decisions because you've got the real information. It's kind of like a business owner can never grow their business to whatever they want if they don't know the fucking numbers of it. Like mm. unless you know how much your product costs, what you're selling it for, what are the man hours required to sell it, what the outreach program is, mm. how you generate clients, where your clients come from. If you're guessing about all of those, mm. you might land a few successful years and you might – trick yourself into thinking mm. you're nailing it. Mm. But 10 years down the line, you're not mm. going to have a consistent trajectory because you don't actually know the figures. You don't actually know mm. what you're playing with. Um, so it's, and it's the same as being in a band, you know, and I can even reflect my times in a band early on with the tours. I was, I fell into this where it was, Hey man, let's just like, just do it. Don't worry about the fucking money. It mm. doesn't matter. Like, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, fuck, if we really added it up, <laughs> we'd be looking like, Hey, well, we spent all this money yeah. on touring. We spent all this money here. We spent all this money here. Were these all really needed? Could this have yeah. been streamlined? If you really look at that figure, did we think we paid that much? Are you just going on a holiday? Because <laughs> some, sometimes that's a shocking number to look at. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I didn't realize we were in this far over our head. Totally. And it's like if you had have known how much, how many T-shirts you needed to sell, yeah. that could have allevi alleviated some of that. Yeah. But you had no, no idea. idea. We no, didn't no. know if we, were, if we sold two or we sold 20. You know, it was just that. money. Yeah. It's yeah. just this thing, money. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So it's by having that, by having exactly it as a budget and a structure, like it just allows you to make better decisions. You can really see what it, what the, where the important areas are. And that, that load that money can just mm. really take, like you mental. can just be carrying that load. 100%. That mental load of like money's really wearing me down. Yep. You know, we, we can't control that we've li we live in this capitalistic world. Mm. We do. And yep. therefore money is important. 100%. Unless you want to live like a nomad, which is fine. Go do that. But you won't be able to be successful in this music industry. To anyone who says money isn't important, um, has a complete is completely delusional, delusional on the world that we live in. And no amount of poverty will bring you, your band, or your family happiness. I had this um this uh my mate Padula who um I knew from TAFE who I studied music with, he had this uh, nugget of wisdom one day where people talk about like, oh, I don't need to, uh, you know, play in front of that many people. It's like you can play in front of a 1,000 people but you can also play in front of 10,000 people. And it's like it's a similar thing with money. It's like oh, I don't need that much. I can – it's like, yeah, but that money would be better. Mm -hmm. Like having that amount of money would be a load off. Yep. Um, but, again, it comes back to – awareness and planning of like, yeah, how much do you need? Yeah, like what makes you happy? Yeah, what makes like you happy? Like there is some people, and this is, everyone's different, like there are some people who would be so much happier living off se making 70K a year mm -hmm. with less hours spent at work and more family time and they're in a job that requires them to work 100-hour weeks mm -hmm. and, yeah, they're making 150, 200K, but they would be happy at cutting mm -hmm. their paycheck in half because they haven't really addressed themselves. What makes them happy? There's absolutely a threshold. For sure. There is absolutely a threshold of uh, happiness and versus it's, income. Yep. Yeah. And it's you, in, until you really kind of decide what works for you, because yeah. everyone's different, until you yeah. decide what works for you 
it's hard to then implement a strategy to get there mm -hmm. because you're going to be – you almost don't know where you're aiming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have we talked about enjoying the process and how important that is to your patients? I think that we've touched on it, but I think that that is such a crucial part of this puzzle that means that you're being patient because when you are enjoying that process, you're not thinking about those sorts of things. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the key. They go hand in hand. Yep. You know, if you're – if you're really enjoying what you're doing each day, it's almost not being patient mm. because you get to do what's fun every day. Mm. You know, mm. it's if you if you think that there's this element of struggle and this has to be unhappy because it's work, mm. but in five years it's going to pay off. Mm. That's I think a very uh, detrimental mindset to get in because then all of a sudden, if in five years you're not there, you can feel well. Hold on, I've just wasted my life. Mm. Hold on, well now I'm not happy. Hold on, well now I'm forty and I'm really not happy. Mm. Um, and, you know, unfortunately that for males usually ends in a lot of taste in suicide. There's a lot of males who get to 40, 50 are either unhappily married or don't have job satisfaction mm. um, and it doesn't end well for a lot mm. of people. Mm. So enjoying that process and going, man, what do I – what do I enjoy doing every day and how do I start doing that? Mm -hmm. It just means not actually implementing patience. You're just enjoying your life. Mm. You're just getting mm. up and you're doing what you want to be mm. doing. And the end result is in five years and 10 years, the spoils are going to be mm. there. The results are going to be there because you liked it. I think Steve Jobs um, said an awesome, an awesome thing where he goes, every day he'd look himself in the mirror and he'd say, if this was my last day, if I got told mm. today I was going to die tonight, would I be happy doing what I'm about to do today? Yeah. And if that answer was no for consecutive days in a row, he goes, okay, I need to change something. Yeah. And it's, yep. it's as simple as that. It's going, hey, yeah. man, if if I was to die tonight, am I happy doing what I'm about to be doing? Mm -hmm. And if that answer isn't, you know, overall a yes, then I think it's time to start getting your life on a track where you can say yes to that yeah. every day. Start writing everything out and start putting things together. Like we're big fans of whiteboard sessions here. hundred percent. Um, we've talked about it in many, many podcasts, but those sorts of brainstorming um, things that you can do with people that you trust that are on the same wave, same wavelengths as, as you and want you to succeed like you want them to succeed, mm -hmm. you will come together and you will start to find this, these different pathways that you can walk down to live that enjoyable life where you're actually getting satisfaction out of the stuff that you're doing every day. You're not wasting time. You're being more efficient. You're going towards going towards the thing that makes you happy. And you, yep. you know, you're not gonna end in something that's really upsetting. Yeah, you're not gonna end you're not gonna wake up one day and feel trapped in a life that you didn't you didn't really plan out. Because mm. um, to me that's one of the worst places to be is to feel trapped in your own life. Mm. When at the end of the day, it's we, we can, life is malleable. You can turn it into anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you wake up and you're like, wow, I, without knowing it, almost by being an autopilot for five years, I'm now in a job I don't like, in a relationship that isn't fulfilling, yep. and I feel like I'm trapped. Yeah. Um, because that is, that's one of the worst places to be. Mm. Mm. Um, and even getting back just to, I guess, show how, how much we implement this patience and long term gain. Mm. Uh, like this podcast won't be out for a little bit, but it's currently at the end of January now. For the last three weeks, we've been talking about planning here. We've literally spent a whole month, like yep. one month of the year planning and we're still, it's still not finished yet. No, correct. So it's, it's like, hey man, most, we don't come in and go, hey, everyone implement patience. Like we're doing this so yep. much behind that. We literally have spent the last four weeks planning. Most yep. businesses would be like, well, you're already month, one month down into Q1. Mm. Like by February, things would be rolling. It was like, yep. hold on. We know that the the beast and the machine that we're playing with here is a lot bigger than than you know yeah. than meets the eye, and that takes that needs proper planning. We Absolutely. need to give this task the respect that it deserves, and that means spending four six weeks planning. Like, so make sure you do it right. Like, you don't. The worst thing is just like don't going to do something and completely fucking it up, yeah. wasting time and money. Yeah, because if you haven't built a road map, energy. Because what you have to do is you're going to have to do it again and then you're going to have to put in the time to actually plan. <laughs> like put it, do, do it up front. Yeah, I fully believe there's not really any shortcuts in life. You can't I, – yep. I don't think that that is a thing. Like you have to do it. Yeah. You have to do it. Um, but the, I think the point about the podcast is so, so crucial. If we did not sit down and say how many podcasts do we need before – because – you know, you're going away for a few months. Yep. If we just kind of kept cruising and kind of just kept going, oh, do you want to record a podcast today? Yep. I'm sure we wouldn't have had them. 
Yeah, so, it's like, oh, we'll, we'll just do one in the spare time. Yeah. When at the end of the day, when you're feeling good and I'm feeling good, we'll just do one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it doesn't, you don't get to your objectives. No. But again, like if, and this comes down to what you want, we want consistency over our podcast. Mm -hmm. So that means we have to give that task the respect. Yep. If what you're doing is podcasting in your spare time, and if, then that's fine. Totally fine. But right. you got it. So that. But it, the awareness needs to be there because then you're just blindly doing shit. Doing things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just randomly doing things in life. Yep. Yep. Um, but even just getting back to it, it's like, man, the biggest, the biggest mindset is it's a marathon, not a sprint. And even yeah. um, I'll drop some personal knowledge now, just from my life and what I've, uh, what I've experienced. Mm. I can tell all the young artists listening, or anyone who's under twenty three who listens to this, I am the same person at thirty than I was at twenty. Everyone, you, people think that there's going to be this huge personality shift and as you get older, oh, well, then I'm going to be mm. a grown adult and I'm going to have different values and all this. It's like, dude, I can honestly tell everyone at 30, I'm the same person I was at 20, I'm just a little bit older. Like my I haven't changed. Mm. So when you think about that you at 20, you're going to be the same person at 30. You're going to be mm. the same guy or girl. So you can start implementing patience. You go, hey, guess what? At 30, I'm going to be the same. Cool, I've got 10 years now. Let's start to work on yeah, it. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that, that question then turns to, well, what do I want to do in that 10 years? Mm. Not who, not like, not even who do I want to be because it's an interesting point. Yeah, you're still the same person, but you can learn things. You can work hard at something. You can learn a new language. You can learn an instrument. You can do whatever you want. Yep. But that's right. It's like, you know, you've got this time. If you, if you map things out and work towards things, it, you'll, you'll, you'll wake the, up. You'll wake yeah. up when you're 30, and you'll be like, "Wow, I achieved I did stuff." Heaps of shit yep. in my 20s. Yeah. Like if you've got a little niggling feeling uh, in your when you're 20, that's like, "Hey, I want to learn Spanish." Mm. Guess what? That's not going to go away. Mm. Just start learning it bit mm. by bit, and you'll wake up one day, mm. and you'll be 30, and you would have got Spanish under your belt. <laughs> it's like if you have this little feeling at 16 that, "Man, I wish I could play guitar." Guess what? That feeling's going to be there when you're yeah. 18. Yeah. When you're 20, you're going to be like, man, I wish I'd played guitar. <laughs> yeah. Just start the process yeah, of it yeah, because yeah. life goes on yep. and you'll wake up one day and you've done it. Yep, yep. Good stuff. Nice. Well, I think that's um, that pretty much covers it. I think we've well and truly drilled the point home that this <laughs> this life, this crazy life we live in is a long-term thing. Mm. Um, you know, give yourself 10 years to achieve your goals mm. and a lot of that internal weight and stress is alleviated yeah, um, and then good planning, good planning, build yourself a budget, really understand finances, mm -hmm. but then also have a real honest conversation with yourself totally. in terms of how much money oh, do I you need. need to be happy? Yeah. Yep. You know, what's important yep. to you and your family? Yep. Um, Cause once you start answering and ticking those boxes, man, the rest just becomes easier. Yeah. Just the clarity. Like yeah. you said, it's just like, it just all kind of, un you get that understanding of, okay, this is actually what I want in my life. Yep. And it might be a different answer, but. That's the way it goes. 100%. You won't know it until you actually start doing it. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Well, nice. Um, I think that about wraps us up. As always, yep. if you found this information useful, if you feel like you may have put yourself into a short-term, uh, you know, jail, I guess we'll call it, if you feel like you're now shifting into a long-term growth mindset and you want to share that with your friends, share this podcast with them, get them together in a room, do some planning for yourself. If you're 20, the best thing you can do is go find two or three friends, yeah. sit in a room and learn and, together and, and go, yeah. hey guys, where do we want to be at 30? Yeah. And write out some audacious goals, man, yeah, yeah. and then start doing it. Yeah, there's that, there's that thing of like when you're 20, it's like it's not cool to do that sort of yep. stuff, but it's like – how cool would it be yep. is if you utilize these next few years? Yep, 100%. <laughs> I mean, like I, I've said it before on the podcast, it's like, you know, I always I wanted to be the the artist center of stage. Mm. Now working in the back end of the industry is so much more in yeah. alignment with me. Yep. But it wasn't cool to be good at paperwork when you were 20. <laughs> yeah. Like it wasn't cool yeah. to be good yeah. at management 20. Yep. Um, but, but I can tell really you this. Happy life, yeah. But now that I'm 30, guess what? A lot of the shit that I do, people would say, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you've got to... You just got to start, start yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice. So well, thanks again. If you could give us a rating, uh, if you listen to us on Spotify or Apple Podcast, please yep. give us a rating um, and share it around. And yeah, if you want to get into a 15 minute free consultation with myself, Bennett, or Matt, please jump on our Instagram. All of the links are there in our link tree. Um, check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on the Marshall Street Podcast. Peace. Peace.